Hey guys, Shavuot Tov. I finally got my hair straight. Oh, uh, well, kinda, but it looks great, so no frizz. You can see it's a bit oily from the ointment I use. It's not an ointment, it's um, a treatment I use to make it less frizzy. But it's straight, or kind of. Uh, so as you can see, I have a new email. I haven't even opened that. Okay, there's a lot of glare. Let me. Uh, okay, if I reduce the shine on my phone, maybe you can see it. Um, so I still haven't opened it. And... This is from my heritage, and I recorded a video of me taking the samples, but I don't think I'm going to upload it. You don't want to see it. It's a bit gross. Uh, I'm excited! Anyway, because I'm probably not going to upload the other video, I predict, well, maybe I should upload, because... Those are the thoughts I was having as I was taking the swabs and all that. But, um, okay, let me get my leg comfortable. Um, as I was taking the swabs, I think I was kind of predicting, um, I know that my city had, um, Roman occupation, Arab occupation. Um, we ha we are a Sephardic city, so I'm kind of predicting, probably considering that I have a high percentage of North African and Jewish. I know that um, Jewish ancestry doesn't quite pick up very well on DNA tests, but uh, probably Middle Eastern Sephardic Jewish. Well, Sephardic Jewish doesn't pick up as much as Ashkenazi Jewish, so I may get some Ashkenazi Jewish because Sephardic Jewish sometimes gets detected as Ashkenazi Jewish. Um, it's really hard to get detected. Um, you know, there are very little, um, things on a DNA tests that actually pick up your ancestry. So, what I'm thinking is that I may have some Italian or something, because Romans were here, but that may be neglectable, because they were here thousands of years ago. I may have Arab DNA, uh, more like Hamazig, North African, and uh, I have no doubts that I have Jewish DNA because in my family we have some crypto-Jewish habits. Um, so that's my prediction, and uh, okay, I left the email. Need to go back to my... Okay, still... Okay. I still have the message here. Why is it appearing as new? I just entered it. Oh, it's a new mess. Okay, it's a new my heritage message. I have two messages saying the same thing. Okay. So, essentially, I'm so nervous because, like, I think I'm, I have fairly, a fair amount of European. Uh, I will have a fair amount of Jewish ancestry and North African and, uh, I don't know, maybe some Asian. Uh, but then again, these, um... The way these DNA companies work is they compare your DNA. Okay, I want to click, but I want to explain this before I go because it may interrupt my train of thought. 
And look at this hair. I got it straight, finally. I have straight hair, finally. Uh, not for long, anyway. I'm showering tomorrow, so tomorrow it won't be um, as, as straight as it is today. Because uh, I didn't, uh, I washed it, but I didn't use um, conditioner, so it was really dry. So I decided to apply the little uh, treatment I have, but the treatment makes it look oily. So I will wash it again and put some conditioner on it. Because if you have curly hair, you know the struggle, you know the struggle. So, as I was saying, and I think I didn't lose completely my train of thought, um, these companies compa compare you to modern populations. So, let's say I'm Portuguese and uh, I test, uh, I take a DNA test. If the vast majority of the, the Portuguese population has a similar DNA, they will consider parts of my DNA that are European as European because it is a pattern in modern populations. So the, the best thing to do is after you get these tests, you download your information and you go to get much and you compare it to ancient populations because these ancestry kits give you pop, um, heritage estimations based on uh, modern populations. And I'm sorry, I'm looking for the email because I already lost it. I get so much spam on my email. I want spam. I do subscribe to a lot of newsletters and I do get a lot of publicity still. Um, okay, my heritage, where it is? Uh, you got DNA matches? Yeah, not yet. Before I want to see my DNA before I get the matches. Okay. Mm. And then you can also upload it to other websites to get more details. I saw a, a website that allows you to, to see your health details, even though my heritage, I think, doesn't allow to my country. Um, but, um, I'm not reading the email from my heritage because it, it, um, uh, it's in Portuguese and I'm not going to read it in Portuguese. And who I got to the page. I'm on my heritage. So the results I in and, okay. I'm really, really creeped out. <laughs> I'm so nervous because, you know when you expect something and then you see something completely different? Uh, in fact, you know, I've been discriminated because as a kid you don't understand uh, that skin color doesn't mean anything as long as you look different. In Switzerland, uh, I was called Jewish, I was called uh, non-white, I was discriminated a lot, even though I am I have a fair complexion. Uh, maybe I should reduce my light. I think there's a lot of light here. I have a lot of lights on. Uh, but I was discriminated against because I was too dark. I know I look fair, but I my skin is more like olive uh, colored. It looks whiter on pictures and on the camera and all that. And they, they notice there's something different. Some of them thought that I I'm Japanese, even though I I look fairly Caucasian. So let's see the results. Okay. Okay, seven ethnicities. Okay, I'm going to see this, so let's explore your ethnicity.
Okay, Iberian. That I knew of. Northern and Central Europe. Sephardic Jewish. That I knew. North African. And three more ethnicities? Why don't they say? Whoa. Okay, so I was right. Not necessarily in the right order. So I'm a lot Iberian. Um, but then again, these rates are compared to modern populations. If modern Portuguese people, we are all cousins, we will test uh, very similarly. In uh, these tests, I have higher Jewish ancestry than I expected, actually, because I know that um, a lot of pure um, Jews do not even test Jewish because these tests are really bad at picking up. My heritage is actually really good at picking up uh, Jewish heritage. But I've, I've seen someone that only had 3% a Sephardic ancestry, even though they are pure Sephardic Jews. Uh, I actually have more Sephardic ancestry than they have. I'm not going to dwell, to, to go into percentages, because these percentages will change from database, da database to database. So I'm just going to say the ethnicities. And the thing is, uh, I'm going to cover up the, the, the percentages. You have all the um, continents breaking down. And then you have the little bits breaking down, not by order of uh, ethnicity, because um, some of the smaller ethnicities are in the same continent. So it's essentially by continent. So I have African, North African, and I think this includes Asia. I, I mean, yeah. This, this must include Asia because uh, Sephardic Jewish and North African. Uh, and then I have North African alone, so the Sephardic Jewish part... Uh, sorry. Um, is essentially... And I'm going to upload this into uh, GetMatch database. Um, so I'm Sephardic Jewish. I'm... Uh, European, Southern European. I'm Iberian. 5% uh, Italian. <laughs> I expected a bit more Italian, to be honest. Uh, but then again, this is compared to modern populations, not necessarily to uh, ancient populations. So the thing, that's why I, I, you should go to get match because it compares you to old population, so you get a better estimate of where your uh, ancestors are from, as compared to nowadays that everyone is mixed. So, uh, <laughs> being mixed, we all uh, these DNA tests don't not necessarily reflect where you're from, but what popul modern population your DNA is more similar to. Uh, so, I will not say the percentages in this video, uh, because it's really, it's, it's really not uh, capable of discerning this. I, I know someone who took a DNA test, and they're, they, because, um, for instance, my heritage is very good for giving you um, good perspective of the approximate regions your ancestors are from. So, essentially, and I'm sorry, someone is texting me and interrupting me. So, I don't want to show the percentages. So, essentially, you can see that I'm broadly Mediterranean. The vast majority of my ancestry... Okay. That person. <laughs> sorry. 
So I'm broadly Mediterranean. I'm all over the Mediterranean. So these, uh, especially when people are from such close regions, uh, it's hard to get to to tell. So the best thing is compare to different databases. And when I have all the databases, I will uh, disclose more uh, percentages because they will differ from database to database. Uh, so I think the best thing is to compare them to ancient databases rather than current databases. And uh, yeah, so as I said, I have 5% Italian. I expected a little higher. I have 2% Scandinavian. Where does that come from? How did Vikings get here? I mean, coastal cities, sure, but I'm in the center of the country. That's fascinating. And 9%, not 9%, uh, 0.9% Nigerian. So I'm black. No, I'm not black, but I'm part, well, I am part African, essentially, because I'm North African, I'm a Zig. But I have, I didn't expect Nigerian, <laughs> to be honest. You know, maybe some Angolan or something, but Nigerian? I don't know. Because uh, Portuguese diaspora didn't, didn't have a lot of... Well, maybe, yeah, uh, Moors, Berbers may have had contact with Nigerians. I don't know. It's, it's really uh, <laughs> odd and fascinating because you'd expect uh, people... Um, to have um, Angolan in Portugal, but not necessarily Nigerian. I don't contact with Nigerians much. So yeah, I have mostly North African, Asian, and European. That's my biggest uh, ancestry. And then trace amounts of uh, Africa. So I'm essentially mostly Mediterranean, and this is fascinating. Hang on, let me get into Gamech because I already have an account. I just need to upload my data, and this is fascinating. Okay, so let's download the information and and the thing is I have the this is giving me a very broad amount I'm mostly Mediterranean and uh, these databases okay okay let me fill this okay so it's downloaded. Now I'm going to get match. I'm sorry, I'm just so fascinated with this. And uh, yeah, so I I want um, to Okay, so this, ugh, sorry, that person keeps texting me and it interrupts my, I'm not logged in. Okay. Okay, so I have to start uploading again. Okay, log in. I already prepared my get much account years ago. Uh, okay, so it's, uh, okay. Okay, so now it's sending. Uh, and essentially these, uh, your, um, results depend on the samples in their database. So it's really hard. Uh, 23 and me, my heritage and these companies 
have modern samples so they cannot they can give you a broad idea where you come from but not exactly where your ancestors come from um get match has access to several databases and um ooh, it was fast it's uploaded okay now i need to help Okay, I need to wait for it to process and to have access to one to DNA comparisons, but I can still use the rest of the database. Okay, so that's good. Um, okay, so let's see the admixture. Um, and I want to compare this to old populations. Uh, let's see. They told me that Ethiel Alex was the best one for uh, Jewish ancestry. Okay. Kit number. Okay, I lost my kit number. Let me check. Okay. Ah, okay. So, copy the code and going to. Thank God someone showed me how to do this. And the results were really fascinating. So, if you, Alex, okay, uh, Africa only. And these compare you to old population. Uh, yeah, North Africa, East Africa. No, that one doesn't. No, that one isn't the one I was looking for. I wanted to warn about old populations. So it's Ethio Alex, I think. They have a lot of databases, to be sure. Uh, enter the number. I think I copied it. Yes, I still have it. Uh, Ethio Alex K10 plus Palestinian. Let me see. Whoa. Palestinian. Omotic. What's Omotic? Huh. Whoa. So I'm part Ethiopian too, according to this. And, um... Okay, I'm, I need to hide the code as best as I can. Okay, I'll just cover it. I don't know if you can see this. Okay, it's not exactly visible. But the blue area is Palestinian. Uh, the purple area is um, Omotic, which is um, Ethiopian. Bantu, I think that's the Nigerian. East Africa, that's the Amazi. So this only shows the part of... Uh, um, this is a lot. Whoa. I'm really fascinating with it by this. Um, and again, I shouldn't show the percentages because... Again, uh, these percentages will change from database to database. Um, I'm going to show the Ethiolix with French. Yeah, even with French, I get a lot of French here. Um... I get a lot of North African, the second biggest, and uh, a lot of Ethiopian, 
And then the little bit uh, that must be the Nigerian part. It says uh, Eastern Bantu. Bantu is even further south than Nigeria. So, yeah. So the, the the Nigerian that was picking up isn't actually exactly Nigerian, to be honest. It gives other uh, DNA. Let's go to Eurogenes. It, I think it's this one. And I remember Natufian. Eurogenes hunter-gatherer versus farmer. So it essentially see, it tells you how European I am based on uh, my um, on old European populations before the migrations and all that. So it's more accurate than oh whoa! I get a lot. So Anatolian farmer, where is that Anatolia? Turkey? I think it's in Turkey. I get a lot of Turkish here. Uh, Bantu farmer, Mediterranean farmer, boom, broadly Mediterranean, so that doesn't give you a lot of information. Could be anywhere, it could be Israel, could be uh, Morocco, could be Argel, uh, um, could be... Tunisia, it could be Portugal, it could be anywhere. I'm mostly Mediterranean farmer, so it doesn't give you a lot of information. And that's the problem with the, those and uh, most uh, da databases is that they don't give you a lot of information. East African pastoralist. Whoa, I I actually have more uh, African and Asian than European in this database. Um, Anatolian farmer, Baltic hunter gatherer. Baltic is that like what Hungary, Romania, stuff like that? Middle Eastern herder. That's a lot. These are fascinating because it changes, and I think it changes based on on different populations. Um. At different times in history, so it kind of shows um, how your popul or how your ancestors traveled. And uh, I'm I'm looking for the one I saw with my friend that showed. Okay. My friend is. Whoa. See these mixes? It's weird. South Baltic, East European, North Central European. Whoa, East European is very little. North Central European, very little. West African, East African, very little too. West Mediterranean and East Mediterranean are my top um, ancestry. Uh, so I could be anywhere in the Mediterranean here. And then uh, about 18% Atlantic. So that's European. I mean, it could be North African too. Okay, these databases are fascinating. From database to database, it changes a lot. I need to explore this more. Uh, I don't remember the database my friend gave me that showed the... the um, that compared us essentially to Middle Eastern... Uh, because uh, if you have, uh, no, it's not this one. Whoa, this one picks up 
five percent what this is weird I don't th it's like these databases have different criteria and they're not necessarily uh, written they don't necessarily explain to you what are the criteria what populations are you exactly being compared to when were the samples taken so South Baltic this this is something that didn't come up in the my heritage DNA test you if you see my ancestry is more divided and um, again these uh, heritages are based on certain populations at certain point in time so they will vary based on the DNA database um, uh, South Baltic, uh, East European, that's very little East European, North Central European, that's very little, Atlantic is about the same, Mediterranean, Ashkenazi, I'm Sephardic, not Ashkenazi, 6%, 5.95%. East Mediterranean, West Asian, West Asian, huh. East African, West African. It's weird. East Mediterranean. I don't understand because East Mediterranean would be uh, West Asian too, right? I have a lot of East Mediterranean. Okay, I'm losing myself in these databases. This is really fascinating. And I'm glad you can tell it right away without having to wait, even though there's part of the, the get match that you have to wait to access. Uh, but let me compare. Oh gosh, I have K13. I need to understand. Whoa. This is vastly different. I have more Sub-Saharan here. Less Northeast African. I have Amerindian. 0.45%. Red Sea, West Asian. West Mediterranean, Baltic. North Atlantic. Huh. It's interesting. Yeah, these databases are changing. Um, I wish it explained a little more the, the base populations that were part of the studies. EU test. Say so it compares me to one. I don't know. I think they should explain a little more what these databases are consisting of. For <sighs> Whoa, this one is even more diverse. North Sea. I guess that's the Viking. Yeah. Sub Saharan. I'm higher sub Saharan here. Red Sea. East Mediterranean. There's a lot of East Mediterranean. Eastern European, a little bit. Northeast African, Sub-Saharan, West Mediterranean, Atlantic. That's interesting. I need to, to see these a little more. I know I'm post... I'm kind of going all over in this video, but I really wanted to see the database she was so showing me and I can't have a screenshot because I don't have uh, I didn't have my DNA back then I think next time I'll just check it and get well there won't be a next time because I already but uh This is fascinating, but I should have pre-prepared this. Uh, okay, 
I don't know what any of this means. Okay, they don't explain what this one means. Um, I'm not finding the database I want to go to. No, this is the one that told me I am mostly Palestinian. It shows me almost completely Palestinian, which doesn't make sense. Ancient Eurasia. I think I found it. Okay, I think that's the one I wanted. Yes, that's the one I wanted. So, it still shows my sub-Saharan ancestry. Let me just cover the code as much as I can. Okay. And you can see here, uh, based on ancient populations, Wow, it's more than I expected, actually. So, whoa, I expect it to be more European. Whoa, I expect it to be more European. Whoa, gosh, so essentially. Gosh, I expect it to be more European than this. I am 43.68% Natufian. Natufian is the people that lived in all the Levant before uh, the Canaanites and the Hebrews. So I'm almost 50% uh, Middle Eastern. 1.78% of Saharan. That's even more than in the my my heritage test. 335% European hunter gatherer and ancestral North Asian. So I think this uh, should be like the, the the Scandinavian thing, and perhaps some um, East Asian. I don't, I don't know. Uh, wow. <laughs> I didn't expect this. My Jewish friend didn't have as much Middle Eastern as I have. That's weird. I have more Middle Eastern than she has. And I'm not even fully Jewish. I mean, I have Jewish ancestry for sure, but this is a lot. Look, the green area. I'm trying, maybe if I take off completely the light, you can read this. Um, okay. There is a lot of glare. No, you can't. But yeah, the green part, I think now you can see better. Okay. This is not helping. The green part is Natufian. And maybe a bit more light. Okay. Let's hope. Okay. The green area. The khaki area is Natufian, which is Middle, Middle Eastern Levantine DNA. The yellow area is West European Hunter Gatherer, and the red area is Ancestral North Asian 
North North Eurasian. So this is fascinating. And these numbers are a lot different when compared to modern populations. Um, and I think the high Palestinian one must be because uh, Palestinians are essentially mixed with Europeans here. So that's why I match more with uh, Palestinians. And then I match with uh, even Portuguese people. <laughs> like Portuguese, most Portuguese don't match as much. If I go to the Palestinian da database, it's crazy how much I match. And sadly, I don't see a Jewish database here. I hope there'd be a Jewish database. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. That's the problem. Is these. Oh gosh, something got in my eye. Ugh. These databases are not. Uh, are limited. Um, uh, okay, let me see here, Mediterranean, broadly Mediterranean, they should be a bit more specific, so the best way is if you suspect you are from a certain ethnicity, just keep comparing yourself until you find the right ethnicity. But you need to understand how to navigate these databases. And, um, for instance, if you take a 23andMe um, DNA test and you're Jewish and it doesn't say that you're Jewish, or if you're Sephardic Jewish and it says that you're Ashkenazi, and it's really bad at detecting, de detecting certain strands of DNA... And you have to know that the Jewish populations divided and some stayed in North Africa, others went to Northern Europe, others went to South Europe. And as these populations divided, the gene pool, pool was reduced and some specialized in cer and kept certain genes and the others kept other genes. So, okay, Mediterranean. Caucasian, Baloch, Baloch, from Balochistan? Is that Iran? So this is detecting Iranian. So you can see as they test certain populations, certain databases have populations that other databases don't have. So you will compare to those databases. I a lot of East African here. Hmm, that's weird. You see a lot of Middle Eastern in Get Match that doesn't get picked up in my heritage. And I think this is the thing. These uh, databases... Um, are limited. Even GetMatch has a limited database, to be honest. But I wish they had a database with all, for instance, the archaeological websites, uh, uh, sites, and uh, you can find people you're related to. And whoa, this is showing the people I'm related to, ancient people. Let me see. Hungary, Hungary. Eskimo, Denisova, Sweden, Russia, Poland, Czech Republic, Brazil, well, that's not surprising, United States. Uh, okay, that must be the little Native American ancestor out there. Kenwick. What tribe is from Kenwick? 8.3 thousand years ago. Wow, that's fascinating. I didn't expect any Native American, that's sure. 
like Nigerian. I can't kind of get it, you know, because uh, Estonia. That's fascinating. Yeah, of course, I get Middle Eastern too. Turkey. That's fascinating. Huh. But yeah, that's the thing. These databases depend on how much data you have. Um, Stuttgart. Um, this is really fascinating. And of course, these uh, databases are depending on how they're updated. I wish there was a database that has the, the DNA from old populations. Um, you have some, but I don't think there is enough. Uh, try a lower threshold. Okay. Seven. Okay. Mm, the fur. Okay, the most similar um, samples available from archaeological websites uh, are from Hungary. Uh, and it's a small segment. This is fascinating. Because it says that you're from places you didn't even know existed. I mean, for instance, this part where it says that I'm omotic. I didn't even know I could be from Ethiopia. So far away. But I suppose I got it from my Jewish ancestors. I mean, yeah, probably. This is so fun. Okay, I need to cut this video short. I'm just so fascinated by this. So I'm Jewish. Well, not yet, but okay. I mean, I was expecting. A, I mean, I I have Sephardic DNA, so <laughs> you kn I knew I would get Sephardic DNA in here. K twelve ancient. So, wow, this gives me a lot of Anatolian here. Nearly half. Beringian, Near East, European. So I'm mostly Asian in this one. This detects very less European. Much. Um, I'm 45% Anatolian, but maybe uh, Caucasus, Near East. Um, According to this one, I'm only, whoa, I'm only 25% European according to this one. And this is ancient populations. So again, as you can see, it's really fascinating because modern populations are so different from ancient populations. And yeah, we moved all around a lot, so it's really more fascinating to see where I'm at now, then um, compared to ancient uh, DNA, then to current DNA. But it's cool because you get to know people you're related to. Uh, okay, let me go back to my heritage to see if they have matches, which they have because there's an email warning me about it. Um, and I won't show this because if it has matches, those people didn't agree to be in a video. And you can see my heritage percentages. Um, they don't match though that database for sure. Uh -huh. Familia my Shigatha. I'm sorry, Portuguese. So, most of my relatives are actually in the United States. <laughs> more, I have more relatives in the United States 
and France than in Portugal. That's fascinating. In Switzerland, I have 19. Um, that's fascinating because I actually was raised in Switzerland until I was a certain age. Um, Japan. I have one one family member in Japan. Oh, that's cool because well, uh, I'm not going to say the name. And he is Japanese, actually. Whoa. Oh, that's the Japanese that they picked up on that, on that uh, DNA, on that on Yad match that isn't even listed here. I don't understand because they pick up that I have a Japanese cousin, but on on here it doesn't say anything about having Japanese ancestry, but it does pick up a Japanese cousin, um, which actually has a hank on. This says the location, but let me see. Um, I think you can see by ethnicity. Whoa, yeah, by ethnicity. Um, I'm Italian! And I'm Japanese and Nigerian. Wait. Hmm, which is weird. Who it does pick up a Native American cousin. That's cool. So it does pick up my ancestors and my relatives. Okay, let me see. You can choose the filters. Ethnicity, that's it. Uh, let me see. Ashkenazi Jewish, that would be fascinating. Why doesn't pick up Sephardic Jewish? I want to see my Sephardic... Okay, it does. But I want to go to the Japanese to see... Okay, Japanese and Korean. So... Okay, I actually have... One Japanese cousin, then I have another Japanese cousin, and another Japanese cousin. That's fascinating. But it, it's weird because it picks up that I have Japanese cousins, but it doesn't say that I'm part Japanese. Let me look up for the other ethnicities that said on GetMatch. Um, maybe that's the thing. They don't have enough people in databases to be able to discern what ethnicity. Does it pick up an Ethiopian here? Uh, no. Okay, let me go for Sephardic Jewish. Okay. Whoa. That's a lot. I have a lot of Sephardic Jewish cousins. Whoa. Whoa. I have a lot of Sephardic Jewish cousins. This is interesting. <sighs> Five pages of Sephardic Jewish cousins. That's fascinating. And now let me look for, I'm sorry, I'm not showing this part because, again, these people did not agree to be on uh, Ashkenazi Jewish, let's see, because it did pick up Ashkenazi Jewish somewhere, so. Whoa. Oh, hey. British, British Jews? Whoa. Okay, two pages of Ashkenazi Jewish cousins. Which is to be expected. I mean, Jewish ancestry is essentially all Middle Eastern. Where I'm going next? Let's see. 
Okay. Greek and Southern Italian. Kenyan. Middle Eastern. I'm interested in that. Oh, my Middle Eastern cousins have Portuguese names, actually. That's fascinating. I wish there was a, a, an area for Israel. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just so fascinated with this, and I'm... <laughs> it's a video. I have so many American cousins. That's so weird. You know, because the majority of them are actually in, in the United States. The majority of people related to me are in the United States instead of being in my own country. And that's, that's weird to me. Okay, not... And it's not even because of location. It's really... These people have American names and... Uh, weird. And Jewish names. Uh, let's see... Mesoamerican and Andean, that's what I want to see now. Whoa! 173 correspondences. This is weird. Because it picks up your Native American cousins, but it doesn't say. But on GetMatch, it detects that tiny, the tiniest amount. Um, it's weird. So this is fascinating. And, um, let me see now. Filter for um, Niche Portuguese. I, I mean, Iberian. <sighs> Whoa! The person... <laughs> Um, I, my closest cousins is one from, uh, uh, France, and they, he has the surname from my grandfather's side, so, yeah. Uh, and then another one, and then there's another one that is Boy Vista too. Uh, it's just fascinating, and he's Jewish. So my grandfather's family was Jewish. Whoa, this is fascinating. He's Boivista, too? And it says he's Jewish. This is fascinating. Whoa. I'm sorry, I'm just curious. Okay. So that's it for this video. If you want to see me explore my heritage a little more. Gosh, I'm so excited. I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. No, seriously, this is really a happy moment. I'm also Nigerian and Scandinavian and a bit Native American. Well, I'm not Native American, but, you know, I have the tiniest bit. And Ethiopian. And it's so fascinating and Turkish Iranian but again these only get detected ancient DNA which could be just Sephardic DNA from uh, people that lived there at the time so whatever comes as Anatolian could be also from Sephardic Jewish uh, ancestors so I don't know it's really interesting and I'm excited. I don't know my mitochondrial DNA. It would be interesting, but my heritage doesn't provide a mitochondrial DNA. Um, uh, so yeah, but it's really cool. It's really good. And um, there is a website that I can upload my information to know about my health information. I'm not going to do this now because it's already a long video, a very, very long video. Um, 
my mom's going to be really, really weirded out. And imagine if I am this much Jewish, just imagine my grandmother. It's really fascinating. Because I didn't expect to be this much Jewish. Uh, I hoped I'd be, but I didn't expect to be this much Jew Jewish. Uh, because, I mean, uh, the Inquisition was 500 years ago. And according to Genmatch, I'm almost 50% uh, Middle Eastern. Not Middle Eastern, really Levantine. And uh, compared to Palestinians, my DNA matches almost completely with Palestinians, even more so than with Europeans. So this is really fascinating. I am excited. And I'm not going to say anything, please don't pay attention to percentages, because um, I need to study what those databases mean, but they're fascinating. And uh, yeah, that's it. Bye-bye, and see you in the next video. Please subscribe and tell me if you like this video. Uh, and yeah, I already damaged my hair. It's getting curlier. I can't keep it straight for long. I try. <laughs> um, so that's it for this video. And uh, if you want to see something, just tell me what you would like to see on my videos. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll make another video better than this. I wanted to record on my phone. The problem with my phone is the camera is better, but it gets heated up fast and it will interrupt and uh, I wanted to record my initial reaction and I didn't expect to be this excited uh there were a couple surprises I'm sorry I'm Nigerian um this is interesting I would love to be able to take other companies tests to be able to compare my DNA to their databases um but no, I chose the one that was the most friendly to Sephardic Jewish ancestry because I know uh, Sephardic Jews don't necessarily get their DNA pick picked up on most DNA tests. And even in this DNA test, you have people who are 100% Sephardic Jewish from Israel and the, the database picks very low values of Sephardic Jewish ancestry. Uh, so, this is interesting. Uh, so, the best option, if you take one of these tests, is go and compare it and get much. You saw the difference in... I, 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 I don't know if I showed you that. I, I did show you the result from my heritage. Um, the results in get match for uh, Middle Eastern ancestry are really higher because they have these databases... Um, for Middle Eastern populations. And I think the reason I cluster so much with Palestinians is because of their Arab and Muslim ancestry, because, of course, I'm not just Sephardic Jewish. We also have uh, Arab DNA here. And that's the thing. A lot of what is comes up in the Iberian percentage comes from North Africa and the Mayad Caliphate. Uh, so I get a lot of Muslim DNA too. Uh, so a lot of what comes back as Iberian is not necessarily Iberian. Some of it is, but this is really fascinating. And I'm sorry, I know this video is long, is it? I'm just so excited. And I'm Jewish after all. Well, not logically, but I have Jewish ancestors. And I wish I had tested my mitochondrial DNA, but to be honest, it's really expensive. And I think this is already going to help with uh, the process with the Baton because I... Uh, you know, it, it proves that I have some ancestry, so it helps starting the process of conversion or return, and yeah. Uh, so this is fascinating.
Oh, this one detects Persia. So, Iran. This is what the other one was saying. Anatolian. Yeah, Persia. Middle East. I have... Whoa. This is fascinating. Indian. It also picks up Indian. Whoa. This is fascinating. And yeah, the Middle East here is higher than it is in the, my heritage. So, essentially, if you get your results compared to other databases, it's fascinating. Again, you will probably be giving up the control of your data. But again, on my heritage, you're paying and you're still being, your data is still being used. So, it, it just depends on how much you want to give up. You don't even have to put your real name in this database, to be honest. Um, this is fascinating. I'm sorry, I'm just so excited. And I'm going to compare myself to other databases. And, oh, that will be so interesting. And I just hope that this also helps me find ancestors I didn't know about in other websites because I have a limited knowledge of my ancestry and now I have more knowledge and I'm so excited and I'm Jewish and I'm African too and I'm European and I'm Scandinavian <laughs> too so still no answer about my curly hair because it could be from any ethnicity I mean get much picked up Ethiopian uh, they picked up Bantu, they picked up Jewish, so where does my curly hair come from? It would be easier without the African to confuse, because it can be from my Jewish ancestors, it can be from my Celt Celtic Iberian ancestors, and it could also be... I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> Uh, I wish we knew more about what specific genes are and where they come from. Like, which specific gene come from comes from that specific population. But this is so fascinating. And I think these values would be much different if I had knowledge of my uh, maternal hap haplogroup. Um... And uh, yeah, there's another website I mean I I registered to that I'm really curious about. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so this is it for this video. I'm sorry, I know it was long, and I'm not going to start rub my eyes. Um, so that's it, and uh, a good day to everyone. Bye bye.